Today we're making all new Christmas decor DIYs. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is going to be the Believe wreath. Alright, so we're going to start off with a couple of ribbons of your choice. I like this wired ribbon with the candy canes. And then I have some from Clearance from Walmart last year. Got it upside down there. And some of this ribbon, I think this came from Dollar Tree. I know you can certainly get this type of ribbon there. Then I have some pipe cleaners, which are red because they're going to match. And I have a pick with some peppermints on it. A little sign that I got at the thrift store. And then two rolls of this burlap, red burlap. And you can get these at, uh, I think you get these at Walmart. I've had mine for years. I'm going to use an 18 inch wreath from Dollar Tree. It's going to be a big wreath. So we're going to start with the same thing that we've done before. If you are new to my channel, then I'm going to walk you through this, so don't worry. We're going to go around the center crossbar and then we're going to go in the middle and we're in the center ring. So this is laying flat and that center ring is above the rest of them. It's the tallest part. You want the curve to be upward in this wreath. You're going to twist around here. If you cross it over the bar and both rings uh, there, it'll kind of lock it into place a little better. Okay, so if you have a pick that is wrapped with paper around the metal parts, you can pretty much just unravel the paper and then pull these picks apart and have individual picks. So I am not going to be using this little gingerbread man, but I'm going to save him for another project. So I'm going to clip him off and put him aside. I'm going to use my rotary blade here. And these are Fiskars. I had some people asking about that. Y'all, I do have an Amazon store, so I try to put things similar to, if not the same, as the things that I use to help you out. So you can just check that link out, linked out in the description box to find that information. Okay, so we're going to be cutting 12-inch uh, pieces, and we're going to do 16 because we have 16 wires our pipe cleaners attached to the wreath and we need 16 of these pieces and I see how it curves upward if you flip it this way we're gonna go with that we're gonna work with it fold it over walk our fingers up flip it around flip it over a few times and then walk that toward the center now you have this little ruffly bow here I've heard people call it a cruffle I've heard it called many different things but you can just see what I'm doing here, easy. One, two little folds, and they're small folds, they're not big. I'm gonna walk it over, leave about four inches, flip it over again, and then walk it toward the center. There's no wire in the burlap, in case anyone is wondering that, there are not. So you can go ahead and use little clips and put these together ahead of time. So when you start putting them down, it might make it a little bit easier for you. Just do it whichever way is best for you. There's no right or wrong here. I like to start off in a stable space. So if you start off in the spot where it's across the little crossbar there, it'll kind of hold it there. But the other ones will be allowed to slide freely back and forth until you get your ribbon bundles on. And that's pretty much gonna lock them into place at that point. So when you start doing this, you're gonna think that you don't have enough but you really do. You really, really will. It's going to get bulkier and thicker as you add the rest of these on here and as you start doing your ribbons on the top. This wreath, the way it is made, is kind of similar to the candy corn wreath that I did. Um, I have a mega video coming out with the wreaths and swags from fall and Halloween. So I've put those all together. And um, you'll see it's kind of similar to that. The burlap is smaller though, so the little ruffles are smaller. This is like a four or five inch um, burlap roll. Okay, so you see some move, some won't move. Just fluffing around here, and then you're gonna start pulling the pipe cleaners back up to the top because you're gonna be, it'll make it easier for you to find them once you start putting down your ribbon stacks. Just pull them up, pull them up, pull them up, all the way around. 
I'm in my old antique wooden chair and it is a squeaker. So if you hear squeaks, I'm sorry. And I hope it's not distracting. Okay, so now we're gonna do 10 inch on our wired ribbon. I couldn't get it to cut very well with my rotary, so I just decided to switch over to my scissors. Just depending on the fabric, sometimes it's just easier to use one tool than the other. That's why I like to have a variety around me at all times. See, now my scissors didn't even wanna cut this stuff. Isn't that something? All right, then I am going to take this ribbon, and I realize it's too long on one side, I'm gonna cut these off at eight inches. There is no wire in these, um, so cutting them a little bit smaller is gonna help them not be so floppy. The weight, in other words, will not pull it straight down. You'll see what I mean. So I'm just gonna fold it in half and then cut these at a slant. You can dovetail them if you want, whichever way you wanna do it. This is a dovetail in case you're new and you don't know. You're just gonna fold it in half, and then from the crease to the tip, you just cut it at an ankle nice and crisp and do the same thing on this side okay so once we have our piles of the three types of ribbon we're going to use you're gonna need twice as many white so you'll need 32 of the white 16 of the stripe and 16 of the ones with the print on them I'm making an X and then putting the smaller ribbons right on top now because the ribbons underneath are both wired it'll help give a little body to this little bundle and it won't lay flat. It'll help support the white ribbon that doesn't have wire on the top. You just kind of squish them together in the middle and then you can either hold it in your hand and do one bundle at a time. You're going to open up your little wire here. Just go right down in the middle. You don't have to untwist. Place it down tightly and then give it a few twists and then you can kind of fluff it out. So you see the size of this? It's a good wide amount and it covers um, a good bit of space. And that's what we want. I'm gonna continue around with the next one. And you really can do your pattern however you want. If you wanna use three different ribbons, if you wanna use four, if you wanna do 12 different ribbons, you can. However you wanna do it. I'm just here to offer inspiration and get you motivated to find some joy in crafting. So that's what I do here on this channel. I don't critique anyone and, um, you know, whatever brings you joy is, is exactly what you need to be doing with your crafting. Okay, show you one more time. And I know if you've been around a while, you're probably bored with this, but we wanna get everybody on board. We want everybody to feel confident in their crafting, okay? So we're just going down the line one spot at a time. So wherever you see your wires sticking up, go ahead and add it there. So you're gonna end up with 16 bundles all the way around. You can fluff as you go. You can wait until the end. We're back to the beginning now. I'm just going to add that one in here and then start fluffing it out. You're going to want to pull each and every one apart. You're going to curve the wired ones. You're going to flip them over and up. You're going to pull them side to side because if you secured them down to that wreath base tightly with your pipe cleaners, they're going to last. It's going to stay on there a while. Okay. So we're gonna work with the pipe cleaners. You could cut them or you could tuck them back into the frame, but let's give them some little curls. How about that? I think this is a cute idea and it makes it look a little more festive. So I'm gonna do that on each and every one. A little bit closer, I'm just using a, I think this was a, a foam brush um, handle and I always save them because you know it's a piece of wood and you never know when you might need that for a project. Gonna give them a little curly cues and then continue to fluff. So we'll give a little curl and we'll fluff, give a little curl and we'll fluff till we're back around to the beginning like so. And it's already super cute. If you wanted to leave your wreath like this, you certainly could. 
If you're new to my channel, I want to say welcome to you. I'm so happy to have you here. I like to always offer you inspiration and try to find something to bring you some joy in your day. And we do all of this on a budget. I'd like to think that the crafts that I create here are individual and they are different. And um, yeah, I want to inspire you to think outside the box as well. So my belief sign, I took the hanger off and I cut it in half. Now we're going to reapply it because we don't want to have two different, um, we don't want to have one solid hanger. Although you could do it that way if you wanted. I want the hanger part to be kind of, to kind of disappear into the frame. So I'm just curling that back because that's how it was when I had it. But I had to use something really small to curl it so it would lay flat. Then if you press down on that little uh, twist, it'll just kind of lock it into place. Again, here we go. I'm twisting, twisting, twisting around here. It's gonna get to almost like a little knot. You can see what it looks like. And stick it back through that hole and then press down on it. And then I can just feed it back through the wreath. I've already looked to see kind of where I want it. Now I'm just gonna flip everything over and take those wires and go right through here. If your sign doesn't have wires on it already, that's fine. Use some hot glue, use some pipe cleaners, um, and make your own attachment. You know, make your own little handles for it or supports, whatever it is that you need. Then when you flip it over, you can always tighten it up if you want it to be a little bit longer. Just don't pull too tight because it will sink into the, the wreath and it will squish it and it won't give it a very nice look. Kind of want it to look like it's floating in there. So this, this is just, I'm just showing you, it takes a little time to get it adjusted. It's not going to be perfect, you know, likely the first time. And then move it around and then you can give it more support. You can add a little hot glue if it needs it to help hold it in place. All right, now for the bow. I'm going to use my bow maker tool. I will link that video for you down in the description box. If you would like to make your own, this was easy for me to make. All right, I am going to start off with my stripe ribbon and put it on the bottom. I want about a 12 inch tail, so I'm just pulling that off on the end. It's a little bit fuzzy because my camera tends to focus on what's closest, but it will go in and out, but you'll get the idea. Since this is a printed ribbon, I am going to flip it over in the middle so that my pretty sides stay on the outside. So I'm going to hold it down and then twist. Sometimes you'll have to use your fingers just to hold it for a minute until you get your wire where you need it. Now you could, if when you're making your bow maker, you could put like a little peg on the bottom to hold the roll uh, if you wanted to. I just didn't do it. I didn't see it as necessary. It might make things a little quicker, but it's okay. All right, just to show you, I want my, end, my little loops to be the same size. So I'm just looking there and I'm pulling up a little bit to make sure that we get them the same. And then again, I'm going to cut off about a 12 inch tail on this side to complete this section of the bow. And this is just kind of a stacked bow. Um, it's not hard to make. I don't want you to be intimidated around the Christmas holidays. We have enough stress on us as it is for everything to be perfect, right? Especially if we have Christmas and holidays at our house. It can be quite stressful hosting a bunch of things. So we don't want the crafting and all the decorations to be stressful. So I'm doing this slowly for you so you can do it. I'm flipping it over because again, it's printed on one side and it's not very pretty on the other side. This bow is going to be about an inch smaller each loop. So if we started off with six inch loops, we want to go down to five on this bow, right? Because we want it to be graduated. So it would be a little bit smaller than the loops of the other bow. And I'm just pulling out and looking, and then I will be cutting it off too. I'm gonna take my other ribbon and put it down here. I do twist a little bit of this just to hold it in place. It's not necessary. It's the exact same on both sides. It's like a little shoestring bow, right? It's kind of what it looks like. I'm gonna take a red pipe cleaner because it will not interfere with the look of this project. I wouldn't want to use like a purple because you would be able to see it. And I'm just gonna scoot it underneath, hold it in my fingers, and then slide the whole bundle upward. It's all in my hand securely, nothing's coming loose. And then I am going to uh, twist this around so that the pipe cleaner is toward the back. 
You see my little measurements here? At any point, if I need to adjust that, I can because it's not tied down yet. So this is real life. This is how long it takes. Twisting it nice and tight, keeping my fingers really low down to the backs of those bows to keep it nice and tight. And then you can flip it over and flip out your bow and taper your ends or dovetail the ends, whichever one you like. You can have all of your tails the same size on your bow if you would like, but I feel like it gives it a little more movement and a little more interest if you kind of um, vary the tails. Even on the same bow, they don't have to be the same length. Same thing here. I don't know what it is with that, that striped ribbon from Walmart. It's really, really soft. It's almost like cutting cotton fabric. It's not stiff at all, so it takes a little more chopping. I look like I don't know how to use scissors, but I really do. I do, y'all. Okay, so now you can fluff it up. And the bow in the middle is just still too long for me, and it's a little bit too floppy for me, so I will fix that. I do something to fix it. I'm looking at my ends, looking at my measurements. Everything looks good, then we can put it on the wreath. And I'm just gonna kind of center it underneath the believe sign right in the front. If you don't want to use a bow on yours, you don't have to. That wreath would have been perfectly fine without the bow. And some people say that I do too much, that I overdo it. But um, again, this is how I like it. This is an example of what brings me joy. And I like to inspire you by sharing that with you. So if you don't like it, you can certainly change it up. I encourage you to change it up. Now all it takes there in that center bow to take a little bit of the length out is just to tie it right across the center. You see there, now it has a little more body because it's shorter. And this is how that is going to look. And you can just hang it right off the wall or you could hang it with a, um, a pipe cleaner or a piece of floor wire. To go the next step, because I'm all about that life, I'm going to add some peppermints here from that original pick. I think that with the word believe and the candy canes, it just looks sweet and childlike and I don't know. We should all believe in something, shouldn't we? We should. We should believe in something. We should feel something. We should have a, a guide to life. You know, Learn how to be good people. Learn how to respect one another. To believe that there's something more out there. And that we make a difference in the world. Each and every one of us. By the things we do and we say. This is a little bit closer of a look. And you can see it's good and full. If you like a more full wreath, you can certainly make it more full. But I try to keep it budget friendly, friendly so I want to show you ways that you can do it to make a big impact without spending a lot of money. So if you like that, consider subscribing. Now we're going to make a scrap mini banner. All of those little pieces that we cut off, I've gotten a pile over here. I'm just going to be using the um, burlapy and red. You can use string, thin rope, or uh, some jute. I've got some beads I used in another project. I thought they would be perfect, kind of pearly and red. I'm going to use about 22, 24 inches, 22 inches. I'm using the jute because it fits through my beads. If you have beads with a bigger center, you can use a different type of a, um, a rope or twine or something to go through the middle of it. Maybe even the baker's twine that's red and white would probably be cute, but you don't see much of, much of it in the end project. Okay, so I've tied a knot in one end. In the other end, I'm gonna add a little hot glue. Protected fingers, I'm gonna twist that. And now we essentially have a little guide to get us through every one of those beads. Now it's stiff on the end and it won't fray. You're gonna save your time. So go ahead and start making your pattern, whichever pattern you like. And I was sure to pick the best of the pieces that didn't have a lot of fraying or miscuts or anything like that. So they're about the same size. And I know I am going to be adding them on here. I have found, because I've done many wreaths before, that you can flip them over on the back 
and work from the back side and it's easier because you can see exactly where your glue line is and you don't have such a big mess. So I've laid down my line of glue. You can protect your fingers here. And then I flipped that over and pressed it down into it. Now I'm gonna take a different color bead. I've got my red now. I'm gonna go down here and grab another piece. That one was kind of mangled looking, so I'm gonna grab a better piece. And I'm just going to go back and forth between the candy cane and the stripes. So what would you use this for? What kind of project were you, would you use this on? Okay, well, you can use it for a tiered tray. You can use it on a cake stand. You can use it on your desk. You can put this on your makeup mirror. You can use this, um, maybe you have an elf that comes to your house every Christmas. And maybe the elf would like to be welcomed with a banner like this. That would be really nice too. An elf comes to our house. So you're gonna keep adding. You're just gonna vary it and add it until you get as much as you want. This is a very short one and it fits perfectly on my wood slice tray uh, or stand that you will see at the, in the end screen that I made. So it fits on there nicely and you only have to use a little bit of double stick tape to hold it down or some of that putty to hold it in place and then you can remove it. This also might would be cute if you put it uh, like in a gift basket. That would be really cute around the edge of your basket and then put all the goodies in it. That would be cute. So when you get to the end, go ahead and tie this off and make it big enough, make the hole big enough where it won't slide through. And then for extra security, I'm gonna add a dot of hot glue there and then slide the bead up on it. And this is how it will look so far. It will try to flip over on its own because it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't weigh very much. So I've got some little shoestring bows that I already had made. I'm just gonna add those to the back of each bead on the ends. That was my little girl's idea, so thank you very much for that. That looks really cute. And this is what it's gonna look like. You could probably even wrap this around a candle base or something if you wanted, as long as it's a flame, you know, as it's a flameless candle. You don't, you don't wanna use anything else. All right, the third project is a greenery basket. So keeping with the believe theme, I got these little wooden words from Dollar Tree. This little Santa is th thrifted and I've had him for a very long time. I'm gonna take a little floral foam and a little white basket I got from the thrift store, but you can use the little tins from Dollar Tree if you want. Some leftover frosty picks. This pick with the snow on it. And then a bunch of these 1980s, 1990s. What year do you think this was? I found a bunch of them at the thrift store. And my mother-in-law has some of these somewhere around this house. These are some extra picks that we took off of other things. And then I have some table scatter with the white and silver, which look like snowballs to me, so it works. Let's start on our believe sign here. You can use paint markers, paint pens, regular markers, paint, whatever you choose. I decided to start with the paint pens, or my little acrylic paint pens. And I'm going to color one part of this hat red, which traditionally this part of the hat is red. And then I will use white on the part that's normally furry and the little ball that's on the end. I'm also gonna use a little white when I finish the word believe. So I'll start off with this silvery gray here. And it was skipping a lot on this wood. Um, it was leaving a lot to be desired and I really wasn't getting the coverage I wanted. So I'm just gonna switch over to a, I think this is like an aged silver, little bit richer of a color and it really gives me the coverage that I was looking for. So, you know, you can switch stuff up and you can paint right over the top of your marker if you're not pleased with your work. I'm always trying to save my projects as best I can. Anything I can do, if I can paint over it, I'm gonna paint over it. If I can sand it off and start over, then that's what I'll do. So continuing around until I get all of that word done, and then I'm gonna turn it on its side, and I'm gonna get behind and inside of each of those letters, because this is going to be in the project, and you'll be able to see it. You can paint your back too if you would like. And see, I put the little white dots in the middle for believe. Now you can really tell what the word says. I'm gonna put some cool temp 
hot glue down in there and I'm gonna put my foam on top to hold it in place sometimes it will break loose because this is that crumbly kind I don't recommend it but it's what I had on hand again with the picks if you can get, unwrap the bottom of it you're almost sure to have individual picks underneath so feel free to rip those things apart and just use what you need if you find something at the thrift store that looks really raggedy but it has the perfect greenery for you go ahead and get it take off the pieces you need and redonate the others okay I will be showing you both angles here as I'm working I've tried doing my florals at different angles but this seems to be the one that people prefer the most because you're looking over the top you see what I'm seeing so I've got them kind of in a straight line from the top right corner the middle and the bottom left corner and I'm going to use this boxwood this is like a frosted or kind of a frost kissed piece and I like the difference between the greens in here and I'm just going to keep adding this you know when you walk through the forest you don't just see one thing right no you don't just see lambs that are hanging out by itself not generally and since I like rustic and I like woodland type stuff this is how I feel like I can capture that essence plus I'm bringing in a little vintage here with the 80s and 90s ornaments and I'm going to continue to look from side to side, round and round, just like this, to make sure that I have everything just how I like it. Now, I'll turn it from side to side all the time. Y'all know this. You know it. I turn it, and I look at it, and I change directions. And if anything looks like it is hanging outside, like this piece, I just go ahead and push it down into the foam so that I still have that nice round appearance on the outside. But you do yours however you want you can continue to add you can even pull something out if you don't like it nobody's judging this to see that you get it done on the first shot just keep trying get it you know till you get it how you like it now we're going to turn the Santa head into a pick but he's got a little ornament hanger hook on top of his head we're going to take that off too I'm going to use my fix all super glue from Dollar Tree put a dot on the top and a dot on the bottom of his beard I'm going to grab my glue gun and put some glue on the back I'm kind of flooding it forcing it out of there and I'm gonna add down another floral pick to this spot take a little piece of paper and squish it down over the back that's gonna help lock it into place and I'm gonna set that aside and let it dry for a while I don't want this coming off then I'm gonna take my little pliers here also you can find something similar to these in my Amazon store and I'm going to put him down in the top now I don't want him to be way over the top so you know if you have a really long pick you can always cut the end off trim it off make it a little bit shorter but I like that position so I want these to look like snowballs because they kind of remind me of snowballs I'm going to just put them on the picks and you can use glue here to hold yours on but be sure it's cool glue and then I'm just going to add these around here or there I end up moving these picks about a bazillion times it's kind of a step down is just what I'm showing you there it's kind of a step down from the top and then I want to show you just a couple of these ornaments they're so darn cute they're just they're wooden and they're like painted little wooden people and scenery so we got drums and Santa and frosty I'm just going to cut these little thread hangers off the top as close down as I can get them. It doesn't have to be perfect. And show you how we're going to add these on here. I'm going to use some of these white picks that came off of some other picks I had. Just my spare parts. I'm going to add some glue here. I've bent the end of this so that it's kind of has a wider area to sit. And I'm going to rock it back and forth until that's completely covered in the glue gonna hold that and then when I lay it down I'm gonna make sure that it is leaning someplace where it will dry in the correct position so I'm just using the branches in there to hold that up the ones that are a little more narrow can be a bit more challenging to do so please protect your hands you could always use a little drill and drill a little hole and glue that in 
Uh, this is what works for me though. And I'm going to add these in at different heights. Now my thought was, okay, well we have Santa and this is about believing. So let's add the little toys in there. Let's make this like something that the kids would love. You believe and you have all that. You have such a light spirit and you're so excited about things. And I think that's what makes vintage so wonderful. What makes us love it so much because it's that feeling of home and that those memories. It's just really, really sweet and precious. Okay, so I'm going to add another pick right on the back. I'm putting on the back of the L because it is a long, narrow spot and an easy spot to put it where you don't necessarily see it as much. And once it is dry, you can paint the back and then put that in the sign and put that sign in the floral or the greenery basket. So I have some of this. It originally came from Target, but I got this a long, long time ago at a store called Dirt Cheap. I am going to cut it off. There's no wire in it. And I'm just gonna use it to embellish the top lip of this bucket or this little planner because you can't see it, right? You're gonna miss that piece. But once I got it glued on, this is what it looks like. And you could do the bottom too if you wanted. But all these projects have that same red and white theme going throughout. And you know, and it's about believing. And I love that, believe. Here is the gorgeous wreath. I think it's gorgeous. I think it turned out really, really nicely and definitely high-end enough to look like it came from a boutique. I really like this. It's fun and whimsical. With just a bit of a retro feel, only because I was born in 73, so there's a long time in there where I saw those ornaments. Yes, indeed. This little greenery basket would be really cute to give to somebody who needs a little encouragement, who needs a little joy and hope. And you see here, here is that little banner or scrap bunting whatever you want to call it right here and I just used some um, double stick tape on the back of the little flags and added it on it stays there just fine it's still sitting there so if you like these projects I would love a thumbs up this is a jump off to Christmas holidays I've got some compilations coming for you so be sure that you share this so that other people can check them out. I'm going to be on vacation with my mother and my sister um, through the end of this week and into the beginning of next week. So if we miss a video, just know that I'll be back. I promise, I promise. I'm really trying to get it done. I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel. If you're the kind of person who likes to have beautiful home decor that is unique, and you like to do it on a budget, then you are at the right place. I am going to bring you those looks that are not cookie cutter. I'm always going to try to encourage you because I believe in you. I really honestly do. And I say that a lot in my videos, but I do. I do believe in you. If I can do this, I know that this is something that you can do. Thank you so very much for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon.